to as many people. I know you're seeing in a different setting. I'm in my wife's car now. Uh, um, but uh, feel free to share this broadcast to as many people as you can. If you're watching this later on on YouTube or you're watching later on um, Facebook Live, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, feel free to share. Everybody on every platform, feel free to comment in what ways you plan on being coming more available to assist God. But let's get right into my points. We're going to be talking about the difference between ability and availability. Let's get to some points real quick. It says the problem. People have a lot of ability to offer God, but not a lot of availability. Good morning. Good morning, Tori. People have a lot of ability to offer God, but not a lot of availability. They are too preoccupied being available to other things and people than with God. A lot of people have a lot of ability to offer God. They have a lot of talent, a lot of skill, a lot of a lot of knowledge to offer God. But what they lack in offering is availability. Abil availability by definition means having the ability to avail, having the ability to benefit and to serve. A lot of people are very skillful, very talented, and they can offer God more information, more knowledge, more expertise, more talent. But what they lack to offer is availability. They have become too preoccupied and being available to other things and other people than God. I have another point here. Many useful people are useless to God. Many useful people are useless to God. God doesn't care about how talented you are. He cares about how anointed your talent is. Many useful people, people who are useful, full of use, are useless to God. And God doesn't care about how talented you are. He cares about how anointed your talent is. Let's go a little bit deeper. Anointing grows with being available. Anointing grows with being available, available to assisting God. Dependable availability leads to a deeper anointing. And a deeper anointing leads to a more detailed assistance. God is looking for detailed assistance. But in order for us to fulfill and finish the assist of God that God passes our way, we have to first be dependable. Are you dependable? Before God trusts, he entrusts. Before he trusts us, he looks to see, can. before he entrusts into our lives, he sees, can I trust you? Are you dependable? Could God use you? Are you even available? God doesn't care about how talented you are. He cares about how anointed your talent is, meaning my talent must be anointed and my anointing is birthed from my availability. Anointing grows with being available. It means it grows. The more I am available to God, the more I am in love with God, the more I'm in tune and more in his presence, the deeper my anointing becomes, the deeper my focus becomes because whatever you focus on flourishes, whatever you focus Focus on will fuel you. Either it will fuel you to the right things or to bad things. And in order for me to destroy the yokes off of people's lives and to be a detailed assistant to God, I have to have a deeper focus and a deeper connection to God that only bursts from my availability. If I'm always available doing other things and being around other people that I am to God, then my focus is distracted. Now God doesn't have my undivided attention. My attention has now been divided. Anybody who has divided attention is a use is useful. It's not useful, but it's useless to God. Who has your attention? Because who have your whoever has your attention has your action. But action is not a bit that's not anointed by God. It's useless to him. How available are you? If God was to come check on you and to ask you to do something, will you be able to assist him? Dependable availability leads to a deeper anointing. And a deeper anointing leads to a more detailed assistance. Noah was detailed. People in the Bible were detailed. God's looking for a detailed assistant, assistance. But how can you be detailed when your attention has been divided? Let's keep going. Your strength is not in your ability. Hear me clearly. Your strength is not in your ability. It is in your availability. Your strength is not in your ability. Your strength is in your availability. My strength is built not in how much I know. It's not built in uh, the degrees I have. It's not built in who I know. It's not built in what I know. It's built in who I, who I am available to. The more I'm available to God, the more my strength builds. But then when I'm not connected and in tune or sensitive, I will not be a detailed assistant to him. Now, how to become more available to assist God? I have 10 things that you can do, that you need to do to become more available to assist God. Number one, you always have to be present. You always have to be present. 
You always got to be there. Most people are not present. I'm present. I'm here. Being present means I'm able. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm here in my Lord. Send me. Here in my Lord. Use me. I'm present. Most people get mad at the availability of others or people get upset with others who are more used by God when that person is less talented. People envy people who God use more when they look at that person, they look at themselves and they begin to see I'm more talented than them. God doesn't care about how well you speak or how well you dress or how well you can articulate or how well you can get things done or do things. He cares about are you there to assist him? People who are eager to be present in God's presence will be able to unwrap the present or the opportunity to present what God wants to be presented to the nations and to the world. What are you presenting? God is not going to give anyone to God's not going to give things to people who are not present. Are you present? When it's time for God to teach, when it's time for God to give instruction, are you present? Even if you're present, you got to make sure you are in tune. So many people are in church, around God, around Christianity, but their heart is not there. The Bible talks about how they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Are you present? Is your heart present? Number two, you got to ask God how you can help. The one of the, one of the re, one of the ways to become more available to assist God, you have to ask God, how can I help you? How may I serve you? Instead of being so focused on being served, you got to focus on serving. Those who focus more on serving are supplied more than those who are worried about being served. You have to ask God, how may I help you? How can I help you today? Being present and asking God how you can help increases more of God entrusting you with things. You got to say, God, here am I. What do you need? And actually do it. Don't just ask God how you can help him and not be there to actually assist him. You have to say, God, how may I serve you today? And that has to be a daily attitude, a daily daily posture of yours where you say, God, hey, hey, what's up? What you need? How do you like your coffee? How would you like your tea this morning? What would you like to have for breakfast? What would you like to have for lunch? What would you like to have for dinner? What would you like to have for a snack? What would you like, to, what would you like for me to do now? You have to ask God how you can help him. Number three, you got to be attentive, proactive, and you have to take initiative. In order to become more available to assist God, you have to be attentive. You have to be attentive to the details of life. You have to be attentive, observant, aware. You have to be attentive and say, you know what? I see how I can make change here. Or I'm attentive to what God needs. I'm attentive to the heartbeat of God. I am present. I'm so present. I'm so available that I'm attentive. Now I'm able to see things that I didn't see before when I was preoccupied. Now I am more attentive. And in my being a being attentiveness, my attentiveness leads to me being proactive. Now I can actually take a jump in my day and being proactive. Being more available to God is being more proactive in, in studying his word, being proactive and, uh, and uh, sensitive, making yourself sensitive, being more proactive in ensuring that when it's time to act, you actually have what it takes to act. And also, you got to take initiative. The more you see, the more you are aware, the more you are alert to what is needed, the more you can take initiative, the more you can do more. Next point. Number four, you got to have the right attitude towards people and God. In order to become more available to assist God and for God to see you as useful, you have to have the right attitude towards people. God's a people-centered person. He cares about people. He cares about the undesirable. He cares about the people that people disregard. God cares about people. And if God cares about people, you got to care about people. You have to have the right attitude towards people because God is not going to use anyone who doesn't have the right attitude towards himself and towards people. How's your attitude towards people? Are you long-suffering? Are you gentle? Are you kind? Are you, are you, are you empathetic? Are you able to understand and need of others? Are you willing to take off of your shoes, your Uggs, your Jordans, your Adidas, your Felis? Are you able to take, take off your Payless, whatever you got, and to try on somebody else's sandals or beat up shoes? Are you able to walk the path that people walk and to understand what it means to be them? If you don't have the right attitude towards people, God can't use you. 
If you want to increase your availability and your assistance towards God, you got to adjust your attitudes. Number five, you have to embrace accountability. God sent them out two by two. God ain't going to let you always be a lone ranger. You got to accept accountability. You got to allow God to surround you with people that can hold you accountable because the more you are held accountable, the more you can account to the will of God. The more you can assist the will of God because you're being held accountable. Accountability helps you grow. The more I am held accountable, the more I'm allowing myself to grow. And if you want to be more available and assist God, you have to accept accountability and embrace accountability because in doing so, you are now assisting and, and helping yourself to be of more assistance towards God. Number six, you have to abolish sinful habits. In order to become more available and to become a more detailed assistant towards God, you got to abolish sinful habits and sinful, uh, yeah, sinful habits. God can't use people with sin on their hands. We're talking about habitual sin. We're talking about, you know, you still watching porn. You still sleeping with people. You still out there lying and manipulating. You still out there um, um, being negative with your talk. You just practicing sin. You're more skillful at sin than you are at the fruits of sanctification. You got to abolish sin for habits and be like, yo, I'm done with this. I'm no longer living like this. I'm going to get rid of these things because I know God ain't going to use blood on my hands, sin on my hands to do something holy. In order to be helpful to God, you have to be holy. You in, in, in other words, you have to be set apart for him to only use. You can't be used by the devil and God in order to be useful. You have to be set apart to only be used by God. You are God's hammer. You are God's screwdriver. You are God's um, 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 uh, instrument and tool. Nobody else can use you but him. When you set yourself apart and you abolish sin for habits, then you, be, then you become more useful to God in order to become more available and useful in assisting God number seven which is probably number one you have to become more aware of who you are in Christ and become more accurate with his word in order to be become more available and useful in assisting God you have to become more aware of who you are in Christ. Who are you? You are a son and daughter of God. You've been adopted to the family of God. The more you begin to have the helmet of salvation on, the helmet of salvation is the helmet that renews your mind into understanding what it means to be saved by God, adopted into the family of God, um, uh, being a son and daughter of his. The more you become aware, the more you become available. If you're always, uh, um, if you're always thinking about consuming yourself with, with, uh, with condemnation and who you used to be and what you used to do, that you are about who you are and what you're doing for God now, you won't be of use to God. You won't be available. You won't be on a detailed assistant of God. And in order to be useful and available uh, in assisting God, you got to be accurate with this word because the accuracy and you understanding God's word will determine the accuracy of words you speak. The more accurate you are about God's word and hiding into your heart, the more accurate and, and, and more alert you will be of the words you say. The more alert and aware of the words you say is predicated on how accurate you are in rightly dividing the word of truth. God is not going to use illiterate people when it comes to his word. Now, he will use whoever. We're just talking about when it comes to deeper use and more use from God, you got to know how to rightly divide the word of truth so that you won't be used as a person to lead other people astray. Number eight, in order to become more available in assisting God and becoming more useful to him, you have to properly arrange your life. You have to properly arrange your life. A life that's not prioritized correctly is a life that cannot be used. Anything that you love more than God or anything that you uh, 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 deem as your sole source of salvation above God will be the very thing the enemy uses against you. Anything you put above God, the enemy will use against you. That's why God has to be number one in your life and he has to be in the center of everything in your life. God cannot be in the center of sin. God cannot be in the center of anything that goes against his integrity and who he is as a person. Therefore, in order to keep God in the center of everything, he has to be the first of everything. Because if he's the first of everything, you will then find your life placed in its proper order and then you will welcome God into your family. You will welcome welcome God into your position. You will welcome God into your ministry. You begin to welcome God into every life because any area where God is not welcomed in is the area where you will disqualify yourself of being used by him. 
You have to properly arrange your life. You got to make sure God's number one because when he's number one, everything else falls into their rightful place. But if your life is out of order and it's not arranged properly, man, you're going to find yourself in mess after mess after mess. Number nine, don't waste time arguing and wrestling with nonsense. In order to become more useful and available in assisting God, you can't waste time arguing and wrestling with nonsense. Nonsense is devil sense. You can't waste your time arguing with the devil, arguing with yourself, arguing with people, arguing with nonsense, and wrestling with things that you should be victorious over, wrestling with things that's occupying your time. Because when you waste time arguing or wrestling, when you waste time wrestling with things, that God had made a wrapped over that he made it a wrap like that you have victory over that man you know you no longer available to use God <clears throat> when you waste your time arguing and going back and forth with nonsense man you don't have the opportunity to add more sense to things in life and 10 last but not least you have to finish the assist you have to show God when he passed you that rock you finish your point guard which is your Holy Spirit will trust you more when he knows that you will finish when the Holy Spirit passed you the rock and you on that wing, you got to finish that joker. You can't. Listen, so many people want to be flashy than, than fundamental. The more fundamental you are in life, the more you can be trusted with God. The more fundamental you are in life, the more you be trusting in God. People who are the more most flashy are the yes, less useful because they're so caught up in themselves. Jesus talked about them. See them Pharisees on their front porch. They're praying all out loud and stuff. That's their only reward. You see those people that do all this extra stuff and be all loud on social media, but don't have the real fruit of who they who they are in Christ. People who's flashy when it comes to their Christianity, but they don't have Christ in life. You see them. That's the only reward there. <clears throat> but those <clears throat> who are willing to be the Mr. and Mrs. Big Fundamental and who are willing to be fundamental in who they are, they're not over there doing all these flashy layups, but they finish simplicity, <clears throat> simplistically when it comes to the rim. Those are the people God uses the most. If you're so caught up being flashy, you're going to miss layups. You caught up being flashy, you're going to drop the ball on the one yard line. You're not going to cross the, the goal line to score. God is looking for scores. God, look, God is looking for finishers. God is looking for people that do all these crossover moves and then you waste time. You do all these moves, but you don't finish. If you want to become more available to more things for God and you want to become more useful and used by God, you got to learn how to finish. If you can't finish with the left hand and the right hand, you know used to God. If you can't catch the ball and drive in the paint and score you know used to God if you can't do what you need to do to finish you're not gonna be useful to God my final thoughts God must trust before he entrust if you want God to entrust more in your life you have to be trustworthy if you're not trustworthy God's not gonna entrust a wife a husband children now you can make children you can find wives you can find a husband but he's not going to entrust you with his daughter or son or with his blessings he's not going to entrust you with certain things when he knows he can't trust you with it don't ask for more if you haven't been trusted or you haven't you have no proof or no track record of being trustworthy of what's uh what's left <clears throat> it's funny how people ask god to entrust them with much with more when they have yet to be trustworthy with what they have. If you are not able to be uh, faithful over a little, you are not going to be faithful over much. That's a formula in life. God looks at faithfulness. If you can't be faithful over a little, he will not make you faithful over many. In order to become more useful and available in assisting God, you have to always be present. You have to ask God for ways you can help him. You have to be attentive, proactive, and, and take initiative. You have to have the right attitude towards people and God. You have to embrace accountability, sinful habits. You have to become more aware of who you are in Christ and to be accurate with his word. You have to properly arrange your life and you, and you can't waste time arguing. And last but not least, you have to finish the assist. Your daily play for today and tomorrow is to simply look at how you finish. Look at your life and say, am I useless to God or useful to God? Just take time to think about that. Your daily play is just saying, what is in the way of me being useful to God? Got to go back to work, serve these blessings, these children that God has entrusted me to serve. I love you guys. Be blessed. See you next time. Listen, examine your heart, examine your life, and see what is keeping you from being more available. Comment, share, let me know what you got from this. Also, look at the links in the description box below. You can learn more about what I do at IamUnplugged.com. 
all 